Mara stood at the kitchen counter, arms crossed, the light illuminating her wedding ring, which she played with carelessly. The gesture was casual, too casual for what she was saying. I'm not. I don't know why you're making such a big deal out of this, Daniel, she said, impatience in her tone. It's just, I want more. It's not like I'm asking for a divorce. Daniel sat across from her at the kitchen table, hands folded in his lap and fingers interlocked. He hadn't said much since she'd spoken. That fact seemed to bother her far more than the conversation itself. There was silence between them, the air thick and tense, but she kept talking, ignoring his silence. Look, it's not that I don't love you. Her voice softened to an almost pleasant tone. I do. But I'm seeing someone, and I think, it doesn't have to mean anything, not really. The thing is, I'm growing as a person. I thought you, of all people, would understand that. He was still silent. His eyes, dark and fixed, never left her face. His silence unnerved her. Daniel had always been so polite, so dependable, never putting his needs above hers, never insisting when she needed privacy, space, or time. She'd convinced herself that nothing would change now either. He loves her. That's why she'll get her way. You'll get over it, she said, more affirming than asking. I need you to accept it. She waited for his answer, expecting a wave of quiet confidence that he would accept this too, as he had accepted so much over the years. But Daniel remained silent and unmoving, his lips pressed into a tight line and his gaze impenetrable as he looked at her. Just go, he said finally, his voice quiet and steady. There was no anger or resentment in it, just two words, spoken in an even tone. It threw her off balance, but only for a second. It's okay. I knew you'd come to your senses, she said with a relieved smile, then glanced at her watch. I have to run. Aaron's waiting for me. We can discuss it later if you need to, but okay, I'm glad you took it so maturely. Daniel remained seated while she packed up her things. She really didn't think it would bother him much, didn't think he would resist. Things were finally going the way she'd hoped. Goodbye, Mara, he said quietly and calmly. He watched her stop at the door. She gave him a quick glance, smiled hesitantly, and walked away, the sound of her heels on the stairs dissolving into the darkness. For a long time, Daniel sat in the empty kitchen, listening to the silence of the house around him. Then he began to methodically proceed. He walked to their bedroom, opened the closet, and pulled out a suitcase he hadn't used in years, and began packing. Only the essentials, clothes, a laptop, important documents. Not much was essential. He was getting ready. Glanced around their bedroom. Her wedding dress, inherited from her grandmother, was carefully packed away in the closet. The bedroom set, inherited from her grandfather, was her pride and joy. It was perfect. He continued his work. It didn't take him long, the house was almost completely cleared of everything that had ever mattered to him. But he made sure not to touch a single thing that was dear to Mara. Left all of her belongings in their places, framed photos on the mantel, snapshots from weddings, vacations, holidays, all her irreplaceable mementos, family heirlooms, furniture, gifts from family and friends who were now gone, all remained. Starting a fire was the easy part. As his father had told him, Daniel knew enough about electricity to be dangerous. It wouldn't even look like arson, just bad wiring. He stood on the sidewalk and watched the house engulfed in flames, not feeling the slightest bit sorry. She wanted freedom, now she would have it. He stood in the darkness and watched the fire consume what had been the center of his life. An orange-red glint reflected in his eyes. Daniel allowed himself a moment of pain, just a moment. And then he walked away. Mara has no family here, now she has no home either. Daniel wondered if Mara's boyfriend would take her in. Probably not. Sophia, her boyfriend Aaron's wife, isn't inclined to forgive either.